All right, hello everybody. Welcome to uh, Mazak uh, programming and a little bit of setup too. We're gonna do uh, turning on a Mazak lathe with live tooling. Even though we're not gonna use the live tooling, um, we're just gonna do how to program and teach our zero and then run a uh, basic uh, turned diameter. Okay, so here's our little control. We got a Mazatrol Matrix Nexus 2. It's a quick turn universal 200 MY. And uh, okay, let's let it rip. So we're gonna go uh, left soft key and then go to program. And right now we're on program 15. I know it's kind of hard to see with the light there, but it's uh, it's program 15. I know these are kind of hard to see here too, but the location will be the same. So if you just look at where I'm hitting on the orange soft key, you'll be able to count that it's three over if you can't read the program edit or work number button. So we're gonna go work number. Then what you wanna do is you wanna pick a work number that's not there, okay? So basically you're calling up a program that's non-existent. That's how you start a new program on Mazak. You call up a number that's not there. So I'm gonna cursor down, and I see that we have no 16. So I'm gonna go work number 16, input, and when I call up work number 16, there isn't one, so it calls up a blank screen. So again, to start a new program, you wanna go work number, highlight work number, and then go program pick a program that's not there and it will magically appear so we have 16 okay so then the next screen that comes up you're going to pick uh, iso which is m code g code or maze troll you're going to pick maze troll okay then after you do that the header comes up on the top all right now the first part of the header is your material the, this is to auto set your feeds and speeds so whatever you pick right here is gonna determine your feeds and your speeds and your depth of cut. Okay, so we're just gonna pick a regular carbon steel, which is the third one over. You can customize that screen to say whatever you want and you can change the feeds and speeds. Okay, next thing is your OD max. And if you ever don't know what you're typing in uh, right there, you can look on the lower right and it usually says uh, what you're gonna be typing. It says it, it asks it in a question. Okay, so. We've got a uh, two and a half inch stock, which I've already measured. It's a uh, two and a half, uh, three inches long. So my OD max is gonna be 2.5. Okay, ID minimum. Uh, that's the, the minimum size of the hole. So there's no hole there, so that's gonna be zero. My length, three inches, and my work face, 0.1. I always put 0.1 there just for a kind of a safety buffer. Even if we're not facing anything off, which on this part, we're not gonna face anything off, but I still put 0.1 for the work face. I still put 0.1 for the work face just because of clearance in case one of the parts is a little bit too long. Then you got your G50, which is your max RPM. We're gonna go 2,500. Now, as soon as you hit input, another line comes up down here. <clears throat> okay, now we're ready to start doing uh, the feature that we're going to create. So you come down here, and now this is where the mill and the lathe control come together, and it's a mill and a lathe control right now. So we can do point, line, face, or turning. Point, line, and face, it'll all be live tooling. And then you can do a manual program, which is just like M code, G code. You give it a G0 and an X, and it'll wrap it to that size. So we're going to do turning. And then once you do turning, there's a, a big option of what kind of turning you want to do. Do you want to do a bar work, copy, you want to do a corner, facing, threading, grooving, drilling, tapping. We're going to do a bar, we're going to do a bar out. Okay, we're doing a bar out because that's what turning is. All right, now there's four things you got to put up in your header here to get your uh, header started. And if you don't know what they are, you come down here and it explains it pretty well. So you got cut point X, that's your stock size, that's 2.5. So it's gonna start cutting. Cut point Z, you're gonna start cutting at zero. That's where it's gonna start turning at. Uh, finish allowance, it says finish X, you don't know what that means, you come down here, finish allowance. 
So it's really handy, this little, this little hut thing down here to tell you what, uh, what it is. So finish allowance X, we're gonna go 30 thousandths. We're gonna put our, our nose radius of our tool for our finish allowance. And then finish Z, we're just gonna leave a little five thousandths on there just to clean her up. Now as soon as you hit input, then the tooling header comes up. This is what I call an engineering data sheet if you're doing M codes and G code programming, which is your depth of cut and your feeds and speeds and all of your tool attributes and tool data. Okay, so we've got a rougher and a finisher. We got our uh, rougher general out. Our nominal is gonna be five. And I'm gonna do another video on nominal tool sizes. Uh, how it picks a tool on here is whatever you type in the nominal size, that's what it's gonna pick from tool data. So if you put five inches in the nominal, it'll go and pick up a tool that you describe as five inches. It just has to match what you describe it. Again, this is a mill and a lathe control come together, and this is the uh, milling portion, um, but we have to use it because it's a, a lathe tool. So we're gonna say the nominal is uh, five, and we're gonna say A, because tool five, which is my turning tool, I call 5.0 nominal. Okay, then once you get the A and cursor over, then you've got your priority. So number means your priority, like which order are you gonna run it in? Oh, uh, we don't have to delay priority. We're not gonna do rough priority or anything like that. We're just gonna run it as we program it. So cursor to the right, cutting pattern. Okay, what do you wanna do when it gets done cutting? When it feeds in, do you want it to feed up that back wall a little bit? It should be a zero. Or do you want to feed in and then come up at an angle? Uh, we like to feed in and then come up that back wall, so we're going to hit zero. Okay, now, once you get to the depth of cut, you look and it says carbide auto, interpreter auto, coating auto, cement auto, CBN auto, high-speed steel auto. This is for auto set. Okay, so whenever auto comes up at the bottom, you can hit carbide auto, and it'll auto set the depth of cut the surface footage and the feed rate. Well, that depth of cuts a little bit too much. We're gonna go 60 for the depth of cut, because this is really hard material. And we could take 100, but we don't have that many inserts. <laughs> uh, cutting speed 392, that's good. We'll just call it 400 just to make it even. And feed rate, we're gonna go 0.012. So you also wanna put an M8 in there for the coolant. And that's our rough attributes. Okay, now we're gonna come into our finish attributes. Cursor over, general out, that's good. Nominal, we want it to be five. A, remember, number is priority. We don't wanna worry about a priority, we're just gonna run it the way we program it. Then we cursor over, it comes over to finish X and finish Z. Is what this is, is this is an additional finish allowance. So say you've got grind stock on uh, this diameter and you wanna leave another three thousandths. Or you wanna say you're gonna bump grind the face on one of the shoulders and you wanted to leave three thousandths on that Z uh, face. So this is where you'd leave that additional finish allowance. We're just gonna say zero and zero. And then when you get to the surface footage C S P cutting speed. It says auto down here again. So you want to always be looking at this bottom screen to see when it says auto because that means you can hit auto and it's going to auto put in the feeds and speeds. Go back over, make this 400 and make this feed rate 0.012. Uh, we'll go 0 0.008 for the finished feed rate and then M8. Okay, so we did the header, which is bar out. We did the tooling header, which is general out rough, general out finish. And now when you cursor down, watch what happens. When you cursor down, it calls for the third and last part of the program, which is the actual code, which is actual size. Okay, see, so look down here, you can do a linear and you can do a taper. We're gonna do a linear. <clears throat> now at the start of the linear line, 
see how it says S corner? That's start corner. Now, if you highlight radius, it'll put a radius there. If you highlight radius down here, and up here you put 0.08, see how it says R.08? That's the radius of 80 thousandths. Now, if you don't highlight the R in the corner, and you come up to here, and you just go linear 0.08, it puts a C of 0.08. Now the C of 0.08 is a chamfer. That's gonna be a 45 degree chamfer on there. So that's a really helpful and easy also. There's no calculation. No figuring start points or end points. You just give it a radius of 80 thou and then you're good to go. Okay, my finished diameter is gonna be 2.25, two and a quarter. And I'm gonna finish uh, two, 250 thousandths in. So I'm gonna do a linear line at two inches, 250 thousandths, with a finish point Z of a quarter inch. F corner, that's for a final corner. If you wanted a final corner radius or an undercut, you can pick that here. But uh, we're just gonna use the insert for the final corner radius. And cursor over one more time and then you give it a feed rate of 0 0.008 <clears throat> okay now so there's not a burr on our two and a half inch stock size we're going to do another linear with a corner of say 50 thou and we're going to end that right at the stock size at 2.5 now for your finish z You've got to take the previous Z, which is 250, and you have to add your chamfer, which is 50 thousandths. Then you have to add another 30 thousandths just so it makes it past it so there's no burr on there. So you're going to take your finish point Z plus your chamfer plus 30 thousandths. I'm going to go 250 plus 50 is 300. 300 plus 30 thousandths is 0.33. Okay, then you cursor it on one more time and then you hit shape end that ends the shape and then you're going to hit end again and that ends the program and there you have it writing the program for turning a diameter okay now you have to make sure because we're on program 16 Now you have to make sure that you go left soft key, position. Because right now it's still on the old position number, work number 15. So we have to make sure we go work number 16, and then input, so that our position number, work number 16, left soft key program and our program number 16 are the same that's very very important that's probably the number one mistake that people make newbies make when they start doing this okay now that we're on program 16 and work number 16 we're going to go into hand jog here which is a thousand times a hand and then we're going to select z on the access selector we're going to go to the manual pulse generator we're going to go negative, and that's going to move our turret in, and Z. Then we're going to switch to X, and we're going to come down in X. We're going to go to Z. We're going to get really, really close to the part. We're going to put a piece of paper in there. We're going to move the paper around until it hits it. And I'll do another video on teaching tools. And now that we've touched the face of the part, that tool is touching the face of the part right now. We're gonna call that zero. We're not gonna face anything off of it, otherwise we'd call that positive 50 thou. Since it's just a turning video, that's all we're gonna do is turn it. So now we go left soft key, setup information. You have to cursor down once. 
If you don't curse her down once, it won't let you put any data in here. You have to curse her down once. So when you curse her down once, watch what happens. Bam. The whole setup data lights up pink and then it starts letting you input data. So Z offset. So we're gonna come down here. We're gonna go teach zero input. When you do that, it puts the distance from the tool eye to the face of the part in there. So our Z offset is taught. You're gonna curse her down. There's no C offset, no counter. Jaw number, we always use two because I have some jaws described on here under number two. And grip diameter for the simulation is 2.5. Tail stock is unused. Reference to tail stock is about 22 inches. Okay, so that does it for the setup page. Okay, now we're gonna go left soft key position. We're gonna move our tool away. And now we're gonna run it through simulation quick to make sure it looks all right. To do that's really easy. You go left soft key, program, and then tool path. Then you go part shape. When you do part shape, it puts our little part on there. Okay, now to zoom it up, you can go scale change. And you move your cursor to where you want to blow up. Right now, it's at 0.73. So we're going to try it and say 0.250. Part shape. You got to kind of play around with what the with what you think the numbers will be as far as the zoom You go one way and if it's too small then go the other way. Okay, now looking at that. I think this chamfer is too big on there I don't want that chamfer that big So I'm gonna go left soft key Program then I'm gonna go program edit Then I'm gonna curse her down To the first line where it says corner of 80 thousandths and I'm going to make that 25 thousandths. Okay. Then I'm going to come down here and go left soft key, program, tool path. I know that I got to do a scale change. So before I hit part shape, I'll do the scale change, blow it up a little bit here. So 0.2, and then part shape. Okay, that looks much better. With that smaller chamfer, I've got a more usable diameter on there now. Okay, then if you go path continue, it'll run the actual tool path. You can go path erase, path continue, and you can watch it again. All right, that's exactly what I wanna do. I wrote my program, I taught my Z. Now we're gonna shut the door. Go left soft key, position. We're gonna keep an eye on the remain. That's our distance to go. I'm gonna come down here to memory. That's the automatic run mode of the machine. I'm gonna turn my rapid down so it doesn't wrap it into the truck. And then I'm gonna hit start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, and then creep up on it and watch it really closely in the machine. Okay, so I'm looking at my remain. It says 3.8. I look in there, it looks like about 3.8. Start, stop, 2.8, looks like 2.8. Start, stop, 2.1, looks like 2.1. And it's very important that you go start, stop a bunch of times looking back up here, because what that does, that builds your muscle memory, and each setup is different, so you gotta do it for each setup. It builds your muscle memory of how far the tool is from the part. What you're doing is you're kind of calibrating your eye going start stop start stop okay we got six inches 6.5 and x looking in there okay it looks like 6.5 start stop 4.3 looks like 4.3 now a lot of students say this is unnecessary to do this but this will prevent you from crashing 2.6 2.6 again you're calibrating your eye and your hands Okay, we got 900 thou, 
No, 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 looks good. Start, stop, start, stop. Okay, now it's starting to cut. I got 320 thousandths, it's starting to cut. Now, sometimes it's not a bad idea to go handle, open the door, and then look in there and make sure that you can make your cut. Okay, I see I got clearance, there's no live tools in the way. Okay, I see I'm gonna take a little bit of a depth of cut on the OD, that's good for your first cut. Okay, I, can, I know I can go 250 and Z. So that looks all good. It's very important to do that. Right before it cuts, you wanna make sure everything's good. To start it back up, you hit one button, memory. And then cycle start. Do not hit any other buttons. Go start, stop, start, stop. Look at your distance to go, start, stop. Okay, it's going nice and slow. So now I can go ahead and let it cut. Okay, start, stop, start, stop. Watching the distance to go. Start, stop. Open the door and there's our nice turn diameter on our part there's our nice chamfer on the start there's a nice chamfer on the stock side so there's no burr and uh yeah that's our part so thanks for watching our video and uh more to come make sure you click the red button to subscribe to there's a bunch more youtube videos coming out on how to do cnc and uh we're also going to start a podcast so be looking forward to uh, CNC Samurai podcasts on uh, CNC machining. Okay, bye-bye.